What we're going to be going over here is a static budget variance analysis, and this is where we really compare our actual results for the period versus some budgeted performance that we have. So we're just looking at it in basic terms here, and we can look at it in terms of a sales here. Okay, so let's see what's included here. So what we would start out with are we'd have to determine some revenues here, and then once we know our revenues, then we'd have to determine our variable costs, which would include our direct material, direct labor, and some variable overhead. And then we would total those uh, variable costs here, and then we would subtract those variable costs here from our revenues. And that's going to give us uh, some variable cost variance here. And then once we know that, then we'd have our contribution margin, and that's simply the difference between our revenues here and our variable cost. So then we could determine our contribution margin variance. And then knowing our contribution margin variance, we can, and then determining our fixed overhead cost, uh, the difference between our fixed overhead here and our contribution margin, that gives us our operating income. And based on our operating income here, then we can determine our sales volume variance here. Okay, so let's go and let's look at what we're talking about here. And this is just really basic here. When we're at the beginning of a period here, we determine or we budget some, have some static budget. It really comes off our master budget or some standard amount that's allowed for our products here. And really that's taking some budgeted quantity times some budgeted price. That's our static budget. So that's what we begin with here at the beginning of the period. So that's really our budgeted performance. So at the end of the period, this is where we can determine our actual results. And that's only taking our actual quantity uh, times each of these budgets that we're looking at or these elements that we're looking at times the actual price. Actual quantity times some actual price is equals our actual results. So all we're really doing here with this static budget here is we're really looking at our budgeted amounts here versus our actual results here. Now, typically you would go in and you'd have to determine your flexible budget, and that's where you would take the actual quantity here based on your actual results times some budgeted price here based on what you have as a standard amount here or your static budgeted amount. But we don't include that here when we're just doing our static budget and analysis. All we're really looking at is the difference here between our static amount or our master budgeted amount or our standard amount that we have and the actual results that we have for the period. Okay, so just going through our deal here, we're looking at our uh, chart or our table here, we would have to know our units sold. And again, everything in this column here, our actual results is based on actual quantities here where the static amount over here, those are based on some budgeted quantities and prices and so forth. So we would know our actual units that we have sold for the period and then we compare it against our static or our budgeted amount of units, BQ here, everything in blue here is for those budgeted amounts here. I've got a color keyed and also the red items here. And in our actual items, I've got color coded here in green. And then we also have this uh, dark blue here for the unit costs here. So for our revenues, going back to our uh, looking at our revenues here, that's just taking some actual quantity times some actual price for our actual amount. And then for our static amount, it's just taking some budgeted quantity here times some budgeted price on a unit basis. Everything we're looking at here is on a unit basis. So our sales revenue variance here is simply taking whatever we, for our actual amounts here actual quantity times the actual price and comparing it to the static amount here to budget quantity times some budgeted price. That difference here is your variance. So all we're looking at is variances between the actual amount here that we have for the period and what we budgeted. Okay, and then uh, for our direct materials, direct labor and variable overhead, we would just have our actual quantities in each of those cases times some actual unit costs here for direct material, direct labor, and a variable overhead amounts. So those would be the actual results on a unit basis that we'd have for the period. And then we compare it to the static budget. And those are all our budgeted quantities times some budgeted costs on a per unit basis for materials, labor, and overhead. So once we determine those, then we could determine our total variable costs here. And those are really our direct materials here, item three here, direct materials, direct labor, uh, labor here, item four, and our variable overhead here, item five. So we'd sum those up, we come up with our total variable costs here, 
for our actual uh, results for the period and then we just compare them to the static amount that we have budgeted or our budgeted results here. So our total variable cost if we look on it as a per unit basis it just take our actual quantity here times some actual variable cost on a per unit basis and then we compare it to the static amount here the budgeted quantity times some budgeted variable cost. So our, our sales variable cost variance would just be the difference here between our actual quantity times an actual variable cost and the difference between it would compare it to the budgeted quantity times some budgeted variable cost. That difference here would be our sales variance, our cost variance here. And then our contribution margin, that's simply taking, looking at our revenues up here and subtracting it from it, our total variable cost here. So we look at, do that for our actual amount here and also our static amount or a budgeted amount. And so that difference here, uh, we would just determine our contribution margin, our difference. So on a per unit basis here, or just looking at it, if you knew it on a per unit basis, you just take your actual quantity times the actual contribution margin here on a per unit basis, and then you compare it to the budgeted quantity times some budgeted contribution margin on a per unit basis that I'm showing here. So that actual quantity times some actual contribution margin, that amount, so, and you'd compare it to the budgeted quantity times some budgeted contribution margin, so that difference would be some sales contribution margin variance. And then just going down to our fixed overhead, just looking at some total amount here, we'd have our total actual fixed overhead cost for the period and we compare it to the what we had budgeted for the period, the budgeted fixed overhead cost here. At some, the static amount here is a budgeted amount, actual amount here, actual amount. So we look at our operating income and that would be just looking at eight here. That would be the difference between the contribution margin that we have here and our fixed overhead. So eight minus ten would be our operating income. So we determine that for our actual uh, results for the period and also what we have budgeted, our static budget. So then we get down here to our sales volume variance and that's really like taking, if we look, go back and look at it, it's just going to be our budgeted price on a per unit basis here minus the budgeted variable cost, total variable cost here on a per unit basis. That difference times the difference between your actual quantity versus your budgeted quantity. So you're looking at the budgeted price here minus some total budgeted variable cost here on a per unit basis. So again, that difference times the actual quantity that you had uh, sold for the period here versus the budgeted quantity. Okay, so we got down to our sales volume variance. All right, so all we've done here with this with this uh, static analysis is just to look, go back up here, is just really looking at the difference between our actual results for the period here versus what we budgeted as our static amount or our master budget or some standard amount that we allowed for our products here. That's all you're doing here. You're in, in our case here, it didn't involve the flexible budgeted amount where you were looking at your actual quantity times some budgeted price. All we were looking at for the static um, uh, budget analysis just between actual results versus what we budgeted for the period. All right, so just one other thing here. We could go and look at our a key if you want to go through that here. Uh, I'm just showing them actual AQ here is the actual quantity sold, BQ, budgeted units sold or quantity sold here. AP would be the ac actual average sales price, BP, budgeted sales price, and on down the line here, everything. Uh, AVO is actual unit variable cost. I don't know if I should go through all these, but B would be the budgeted unit variable cost, BVO, AVC, actual total unit variable cost, BVC, budgeted total unit variable cost, AFO, actual fixed overhead, BFO, budgeted fixed overhead, ACM would be actual contribution margin on a per unit basis, BCM would be some budgeted contribution margin on a per unit basis, ADM would be an act, the actual material cost on a unit basis, BDM, uh, would it be the budgeted material cost on a per unit basis? ADL would be the actual uh, air labor unit cost on a per unit basis. BDL would be the budgeted labor unit cost on a per unit basis. You can see there's a whole lot of variables that go in here. But all you're really doing is comparing your actual results uh, for the period versus what you budgeted, uh, your static budget or your standard amounts for the period. Okay, so that'll cover our topic here on looking at the static budget variance analysis.